Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. When we talk about data science, we often talk about data wrangling so we can find large data sets that provide the information we need. We also talk about data munging, where we explore and pre process the data to get it ready for our model creations. All that is critical to the success of our business goals. As mentioned in previous videos, it can actually represent around 80% of the effort in a data science project. However, we have to remember that effort is not result. What are we trying to achieve? The goal is to get a model that helps us get insights as what to do next. Some people refer to this as next best action. Depending on what is being done, the next best action has different requirements. Let's look at a few examples. A customer logs into our platform. We want to show her the best possible recommendations based on past history and her customer profile. A cell phone user experienced dropped calls. What should the telco company do about it? Multiple news articles come out that relate directly or indirectly to company stocks traded on a specific platform. Does that trigger automatic actions for specific customers? A customer service representative answers a call about a complaint. What's the best way to resolve the issue? Some key performance indicators on machines in a factory are going out of specs. What should we do? There is a lot of activities on our system. Are we experiencing a denial of service attack? Is someone trying to steal our customer data? A few things come to mind. How fast must I make the decision? When a customer logs into a platform, we could take a few seconds before we have to give an answer, working at human speed. If we're looking at specs for a machine in a factory, we may have to react very quickly or the machine could fail and cause downtime and possibly costly repairs. We have to operate at machine speed. The same applies to DoD attacks and security breaches. The difference in speed can mean the difference between finding out it happened and stopping the attack. These use cases also make us realize that information can be less valuable over time. Simply put, insight is perishable. We all know that we just have a few seconds to react in a web interaction. People expect an answer quickly. There is a limit where people will simply leave. This represents lost opportunities. Here's another way to look at lost opportunities. Let's say you are monitoring a patient in an intensive care unit. You have sensors for heartbeat, oxygenation, blood pressure, and so on. Each sensor has limits set so alarms sound when they go out of specs. If you can monitor the different indicators in real time, monitor the rate of change and correlate them together, it is possible to detect a serious condition quicker. The result is a higher success rate in solving the issue. Also, when a problem is detected sooner, the solution may be simpler, leading to a lower cost. The same applies to monitoring equipment, where if a problem is detected early, it can be addressed with minimal disruption and cost. This demonstrates that data from a repository or data at rest is processed differently from streaming data or data in motion. Let's start with the general pattern of using data at rest. Data is stored in the repository. Then someone comes up with a business question to ask. We can then formulate a query to the repository to retrieve the data we need to answer the question and either get the answer or have to do further analysis to refine the data and get our answer. With data at rest, you have access to a large amount of historical data to get to the answer. In fact, this is a characteristic that makes it possible to create machine learning models since we have a large amount of data available. Another important characteristic is that each query is independent from each other. The repository returns the answer to the query and does not expect any follow-up. Even rerunning a query must retrieve the data from scratch since new data may have been inserted and old data may have been removed between the queries. By contrast, data in motion represents a continuous conversation. Each new record or event triggers a new evaluation that is informed from what happened before. Streaming analytics operates with context. It does not only look at the new data, but can also look at the rate of change. Keeping up with the incoming data is crucial, so processing is kept in memory. This means that the depth of historical data is limited by available memory. 
Still, there are ways to keep a significant amount of data in memory by using clustering of multiple physical machines. In the context of data science and machine learning, we have to consider that the data coming in may need to be prepared. This means we must put it in the right format for scoring, but it may also mean that we need to complete the incoming records with data from a repository. The data coming in the model for scoring must have the same format as the one used for the model training. This can make an implementation more complicated since it may have to take advantage of multitasking and multiprocessing. In brief, keep in mind the difference of a stateless data repository compared to the context-based data in motion. There are multiple approaches that can be used to implement such a solution. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at what can be used to implement a streaming solution. See you next time on Bite-Size Data Science, and don't forget to subscribe.